it's one of the foremost social debates of the modern world, currently centered on a legal battle between tech giants Apple and the FBI. But the question remains, should national security trump personal privacy? Welcome to Watch Mojo News, the weekly series where we break down news stories that might be on your radar. In this installment, we're counting down 10 crucial facts you should know about the situation between Apple and the FBI. Number 10. What is the current situation between the FBI and Apple? As part of the investigation into the San Bernardino terror attack that took place in late 2015, the FBI requested that Apple create software to enable authorities to unlock an iPhone belonging to one of the perpetrators of the massacre, Syed Rizwan Farouk. Without Apple's cooperation, Farouk's phone is almost impossible to hack due to increased security, which Apple offers as a standard. While the FBI says that their gaining access to Farouk's device is a matter of national security, Apple argues that to unlock the phone would undo years of technological progress for personal privacy. I don't want to read your email. I don't want to read your text. This is not information that we need to know, that we want to know, that we should know. Number 9. What instigated the FBI's demand? The San Bernardino terror attack occurred on December 2, 2015 at the Inland Regional Center in San Bernardino, California. 14 people were killed and a further 24 injured as part of a mass shooting and attempted bomb attack carried out by married couple Saeed Rizwan Farouk and Tashfeen Malik. Both Farouk and Malik were killed later in the day during a shootout with police, and both were lawful U.S. residents. We are in pursuit of the uh, suspect vehicle. We've got shots fired out the back window. That's one reason why the case has been labeled as an example of homegrown terrorism in America. The majority of those killed in the attack were county officials in what was the second deadliest mass shooting in California's history and the worst terror attack in the United States since 9-11. In a statement dated February 21, 2016, FBI Director James Comey explained that the FBI wanted the chance to seek justice for the victims and possibly locate terrorists associated with the perpetrators of this attack, and that without such a solution, the government organization has been failing in terms of its intelligence gathering efforts. Number 8. How did Apple and Silicon Valley react to the demand? Apple opposed the order to override security on Farouk's phone and received backing from some of the tech world's most influential names. For CEO Tim Cook, the FBI is asking Apple to, quote, undermine decades of security advancements. Cook says in an open letter, quote, in the wrong hands, this software, which does not exist today, would have the potential to unlock any iPhone in someone's physical possession, before suggesting that the FBI is trying to force, quote, a back door to the iPhone. You can't have a back door that's only for the good guys, that any back door is something that bad guys can exploit. The worry is that if Apple decrypts one phone, that will weaken the legitimacy of security on all devices and potentially the internet as a whole. For Google CEO Sundar Pichai, the move, quote, could be a troubling precedent, while Facebook and Twitter have also supported Apple's stance. Number 7. What does the FBI want from Apple? The FBI is not simply ordering Apple to unlock Farouk's device. They're requesting that Apple make it easier for authorities to hack the phone themselves with the development of a new version of their iOS operating system that's free of certain security protections. This is an extension of an even bigger issue that's cropped up between the FBI and Apple over the previous couple of years, where the FBI requested that the tech company build a backdoor into the software of all iPhones that would allow the government to access data on any device they wish regardless of whether or not that data was encrypted. Apple altered its software in 2014, shortly after the much-publicized celebrity photo hack. Agents will be interviewing the alleged victims and will likely be in touch with Apple. And the revelations brought forth by whistleblower Edward Snowden to ensure that they couldn't gain access to sensitive customer data. I would return home tomorrow as long as the government was prepared to be reasonable and protect the interests of our rights and society. But the FBI is trying to exploit a loophole that Apple left open. It says that Apple cannot unlock the phone or decrypt the data without user approval. But nowhere does it say that the government can't do it. Should Apple comply with the Bureau and grant easier access, unlocking the device would remain a task for the FBI to carry out. 
And depending upon the strength of Farouk's basic password, decoding could still take years to complete. Now, one approach the FBI could take would be trying to unlock the phone using obvious passwords like 1234, 9999, and a favorite for ISIS, 1515. <laughs> Number six, what are the current security measures on iPhones? iPhone security altered drastically in 2014, as Apple made sure that all device data was encrypted by default, making it impossible for the company themselves to bypass customer passwords. Any device running iOS 8 software or later is subject to the same security feature that the FBI is trying to overcome. It has two main functions to protect against brute force attacks, the likes of which authorities are looking to mount. Firstly, there's an 80 millisecond time delay between any two password attempts, which may sound small, but it can make the decryption process significantly longer. Secondly, there's an auto erase feature that activates after just 10 unsuccessful password attempts. Once it's enabled, device data becomes permanently inaccessible. It's a kind of a self-destruct security feature. Not to be confused with the self-destruct feature on your iPhone screen, which is to drop it once from literally any height. <laughs> Number five, how feasible are their demands? Should Apple do as the FBI has ordered, it would require a huge rewrite of the existing operating system. And this, to some, would be a potentially dangerous backward step for the tech world. Although the new, more vulnerable software would only be required for the isolated San Bernardino phone, there are implications for every single iPhone user on the planet. Because even if the FBI's demands are feasible, Apple doesn't want them to appear so. If the company assists in the decryption of Farouk's phone, then they prove that Apple security is navigable and undermine their own brand. Number four, what are the security ramifications? Once Apple proves that iOS security is passable and relents for the first time over issues concerning password protection, their much feared proverbial back door opens. This basically reduces the security over all iPhone devices and platforms and wouldn't necessarily be the most secure platform out there today. In theory, governments and organizations across the world will look to follow the FBI if they're not already doing so. With the right funding and manpower, governments may even be able to negotiate Apple security without help from the company at all. Smartphones are among our most personal and intimate possessions, so the potential for invasions of privacy in the future is huge. Number three, who else could unlock the iPhone if Apple doesn't? Though Apple continues to claim even they can't unlock a customer's phone, the situation has provoked some third parties to suggest that the security is breakable. John McAfee, the antivirus software creator, is perhaps the most prominent voice casting Apple security into doubt. Every software product with a backdoor was hacked within a few weeks of the backdoor being created. Although he agrees that Apple should not create a backdoor to be utilized by the government, McAfee said that he would decrypt the San Bernardino iPhone, quote, free of charge. I have offered to the FBI for free to take my team, take that one phone, take it apart, see what's in it, and give it to the FBI. That violates no one. Claiming it would take his team just, quote, three weeks to do so. It's, it's not uh, rocket science, but it does take time. McAfee's claims have been met with skepticism, however, as security expert Graham Cluley explains. He says that he will principally do it using social engineering. Social engineering isn't going to reveal a dead person's pin code to you. Number two, can Apple secure future phones? If Apple does give in to the FBI, however, iPhone security is not irreparably tarnished. Future updates will be written into the software, likely with security measures to ensure that a similar situation doesn't occur again. It might be expected, for example, that Apple would make it more difficult for any type of software to be put onto an iPhone without user permission first. But the law is likely to change with technology as well, especially if the authorities defeat Apple in this instance and gain an edge in the debate. Essentially, future iPhones will technically be more secure, but also more prone to governmental control. Number one, who will win this fight? It's difficult to predict who will emerge victorious from this battle. On the one hand, Apple is arguably the most influential consumer company in the world, and it's arguing for the right to personal privacy, which is universally important. We feel a significant obligation to help our customers protect their information. And the only way we know how to do that is to encrypt. 
However, they're fighting against what can justifiably be seen as a serious matter of security and civilian safety. I think it's disgraceful that Apple is not helping on that. I think uh, security first, and I feel always felt security first. In this one instance, the information retained on the San Bernardino device could prove crucial in America's ongoing effort against terrorism. Our nation has been at war with terrorists since Al-Qaeda killed nearly 3,000 Americans on 9-11. But once one iPhone has been unlocked, how many more will follow? As two juggernauts collide, one thing is certain, the issue will not go away. Onlookers can expect this socially sensitive fight to rumble on for some time. No one should have to decide privacy or security. We should be smart enough to do both. Did these facts get you thinking? To vote for which news story is covered next, head over to watchmojo.com slash suggest. And be sure to hit that subscribe button for more newsworthy top tens published every week. Thank <music> you.